I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless you. And America. Everybody, thank you for your patience. Peter, thanks for making it. All right, so first off I was uh, on meeting. the agenda is an informal discussion with the Rotary Club for the gazebo at the Littleton Common. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. And we should get the briefing coming up here. I'm Paul Lavelle, Littleton Rotarian. I'm joining this evening with other Rotarians. What I'd like to do this evening is present to you a proposal that the Littleton uh, Rotary Club is offering to the town to donate a gazebo on the common. And I'll take you through it uh, to kick it off. That's the purpose for tonight. My purpose, though, is to obtain your support for the, uh, this proposal. You'll see that I've been in front of some other boards and committees here in town already, uh, building support for this as uh, we socialize it amongst the various boards, committees, and commissions in town, along with also the residents of the town of Littleton. Next, please. Okay, so why a gazebo and why now? Before I get into that, though, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Rotary. Um, about 1.2 million members around the world, 35,000 clubs around the world. You see, it's a very ubiquitous organization. Um, as you can see on the slide, uh, service above self, um, and of the many things that Rotary does internationally, nationally, and locally, we want to make lasting changes in our communities. And we feel that this gazebo project is a piece of the, one of those lasting changes. And one of the things we're interested in is growing local economies. And you may say, well, how would a gazebo in the town grow the local economy? We see it certainly working so the aesthetics of the town, and then also that there's a commitment of the folks in Littleton to wanting to improve our common, and that other people in our businesses see that and other folks see it, so we see it as a multiplier effect. Next, please. Okay, I'm going to take you back to, and you're familiar with the master plan, but the reason I bring it up here is because of the three priorities the master plan updates steering committee offered to the town, revitalization of the common was one of those three. Next, please. Of the eight strategy areas, the common was one of them. And you can see just the um, vis right there on the wall. It's the amount of effort folks put into looking in the common as we went through this process. As you all know, a two-year process. Next, please. And the first eight out of 67 recommendations were about the common. So I'm trying to lay the foundation, and hopefully I have at this point. The common is important to all of us here in town. Next, please. Also, four years ago, the Littleton Tercentennial Legacy Subcommittee also recommended to the Board of Selectmen and the town at large to look at the common to do something as a gift and a renaissance project. And we really think that this could be that gift that becomes a renaissance project in our common. Next, please. Okay, so back to you know, a little bit of the uh, nuts and bolts of all this. The photo on the right, you can see uh, it's north up and it shows the common area. It does. You have Stephen Street uh, at the pretty much the midsection, and then you can see the intersection of 2A and 119. On the left, it's skewed about 45 degrees, so north up in this case is pointing northeast. Uh, and the positioning on the common is a starting point for us. It's not that we say it has to be there. Just I thought uh, after working with the Sturtz brothers and Littleton Earthworks as to that may be a good position. You can see it's opposite the ends of the Veterans Memorial. Uh, it uh, disturbs no trees, so we're looking at that uh, option also. And where might it best fit? You're going to see the uh, building itself, we're looking at it roughly a uh, 20 foot octagonal building, so an eight sided building. Uh, and the whole thing that you see up there is roughly 2,000 square feet. Next, please. A larger view of the artist rendition. As I said, uh, octagonal, uh, about 2,000 square feet for the entire uh, surface up there to include the pavers and the um, plantings. Next, please. Same gazebo. Uh, the roof line <coughs> is primarily why I'm showing you this one. I'm going to show you the next one, please. And you can see the ramp on the right. Now, what we're proposing shows the ramp on the left. Uh, and right or left is, is not all that relevant, um, but it's a starting point again. So next, please. And then... And then the pavers at uh, the blocks that we're proposing. Uh, again, not sacrosanct, it's just a proposal. It's a mm -hmm. part of Okay, what do we see the benefits? Yes, sir. Just I hate the, uh, the type of bricks you're going to use. What kind of pavers did you say? They're the stone. You just want to back up one. They're the uh, stone, you know, the cast concrete. Right. Um, there are different 
makes and brands and yes. such like this and i've seen some that have, after five years become like the ones out here they're very porous mm -hmm. they're, they're they look like hell can we try not to get the same type we have in the walkway here we will not try not to we will not to there you go thank you i like it yeah we said that yeah. all right okay benefit of the town certainly focal point for the center of our town uh, the aesthetics I mentioned a little bit earlier, we think it certainly serves to enhance that. A venue for many different opportunities, concerts, recitals, oratory. We know that we do the tree lighting out there. We have the show Valley Corral, for instance, to come out and see. You see the kids on Thursdays doing dance recitals and stuff. They're doing them on the grass. It's an opportunity to be on firm ground, so our firm footing, better way to put it. Uh, cover for coming events. And then we really believe this helps contribute to that um, resolve that we as a community have towards revitalizing the common. Next, please. We are asking the town to consider that we dedicated to a model Rotarian, uh, Mr. Donald Sturtz. Uh, Don passed away about 10 years ago. He'd been the treasurer, the president, uh, teacher, mentor, motivator, a very humble and gracious person. And you see, I threw a couple of 50 cent words in there. Urbane and you're right. Okay. The thing is, they describe him to a T. If you open up the dictionary, you're going to see Don Sturtz pitch with those words. He was a sophisticated gentleman of high class and grace and certainly a very learned person, a man of letters, if you would, and also a man who wanted to expand the knowledge of all those who were with him. And he was indeed a teacher and a mentor. Next, please. I offer you know, a few examples. Uh, I'll put it up there, service to humankind, because indeed it is. Surely uh, here in the town of Littleton itself, with the Russell Street third grade um, dictionary project, which we just did yesterday for the umpteenth year. And uh, to show how long lasting that is, when we had third Thursday this past summer, it was the second one, so the one in July. We had a rotary tent up there and uh, people coming and going. And uh, these two young gals came up. They're about 15, 16 years old. And they go, you gave us a dictionary in third grade. So they remember that. It, it does make a lasting impression. So we certainly did something very proud of. And then seeing about 120 kids yesterday morning, you know, eight-year-olds uh, getting their dictionary. Very enthusiastic. Don't start at that. Uh, this youth, uh, youth Leadership Award is between the sophomore and junior year. We send six to eight kids each year. It's a weekend long, usually on college campus. It's very intensive leadership training uh, for these kids. They come away uh, just raving about the program. Again, Don was very important in that. Uh, high School Scholarship Trust, uh, the Littleton Education Fund. Again, Rotary's participation and contributions to that had its genesis uh, pretty much with Don. Uh, service to the community culture, start the side of the Lyceum. As you all know, the uh, longest operating Lyceum in the United States, over 175 years, if I remember the number right. Um, and then many Thanksgiving breakfast, holiday bazaar, tree lighting, all things you've participated in one way, shape, or form over the years. Service to improving health. I threw that up there, and you're going to see a $450 million um, number up there. You go, come on, Littleton, $450 million? No, we're part of a bigger process. I'd like to you know, give you two acronyms, PAIN and PAN. PAIN stands for Pakistan, Afghanistan, India, Nigeria. When I joined the Rotary 11 years ago, those were the only four nations in the world that still had polio being recorded as an outbreak. Now India's off, it's just PAN. Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Nigeria. It still remains a daunting challenge, so daunting that Rodeo, excuse me, Rotary calls it Polio Plus, is committed to helping eradicate it. And the Bill and Melinda Gates think so highly of this program that they've signed on, as you can see, the tune of $450 million. And it's a real side note about uh, the influence of Rotary around the world. Rotary is the only non-governmental organization that sits on the UN or a seat. And they were found, helping be a founding member of the UN back in the uh, 40s. Service the international stage. Uh, it's worked with uh, Egyptians, other uh, nations and nationalities of helping uh, kids to create exchanges, even as young adults, uh, both at a business level and certainly at a social cultural level. Uh, Banley Heffel Exchange is where uh, folks from the United Kingdom come. And I'd be at a meeting for that right now if I weren't standing in front of you because come this next September, we'll have folks from the UK come on over, stay with us for a couple weeks in each of our homes for three to four days each, and then on the off years, uh, we go over there, like Cynthia and I did that uh, three years ago. I had a great time spending two weeks uh, living with uh, different Brits. Uh, it's worked very extensively at that. And the intangibles, a lifelong learner and uh, leader, as I said, it's certainly an epitome of uh, tolerance for all of us. Next, please. We're asking that we be able to put up a uh, granite uh, plaque uh, dedicated to 12 inches by 18 inches, laser etched on granite. Next, please. Our proposed placing of it where it is uh, as far as relative to the uh, patio itself. Next, please. Financials. We're looking at about a $55,000 budget, 45000 of which Rotary from Littleton is going to contribute. Donated labor materials estimated to be about $10,000. I'd like to bring your attention to the fourth line there, town of Littleton, zero. So we're asking for the real estate in the town to allow us to put it there. Power supplied by LELD. Uh, gentleman in town, you may remember vaguely, 
Savas Danos. Mm -hmm. uh, Savas is our intermediary with uh, light and water. Correct. And uh, right now they're going to put it on their agenda in January uh, for the financials and look to vote for to the budget that year. Good. So it'll be in 2018. Annual maintenance provided by Rotary. Yeah, it's a question that always comes up. Well, nice, you put something there, you plan it, but now who's going to maintain it? Mm -hmm. We've committed to doing that. Next, please. Timeline. Uh, little country guys, when I first went to see them, they were enthusiastic. Uh, I've been to the highway department since. They support. PNBC supports. Selectmen have offered their support a week and a half ago. Little Country Gardeners went back to them last uh, Wednesday morning, last Tuesday morning, excuse me, and they support it. Linda Gianetta, who I think many of you know, is now with us also, and she's representing them to help us pick up the plantings and the like. They ask certainly low to zero maintenance on the plantings, but certainly something that's uh, nice. Um, Mass Planning Petition Committee, because it was not an agenda ice item, uh, but I did uh, bring it to them, and so no position was taken. Uh, planning Board, I'm with you all tonight. And I've just uh, asked the Historical Society, Historical Commission, excuse me, to be on their agenda in November. And look at another town uh, boards and commissions here in town to actually meet with them, again, to socialize this and seek their support. We're trying to do a timeline that gets us by Christmas time that we can get the final approvals. So that come the uh, early winter, we can begin ordering, getting the supplies in. What a groundbreaking mid-March, you know, weather dependent, uh, how about the ground is. What a ribbon cutting for uh, 12 May in 2018. Next, please. Circling back to that Tercentennial Legacy Subcommittee recommendation, we really believe, as I said earlier, that this can be that gift that fulfills that gift to the town that is a part of a Renaissance project in our common. Next, please. So the bottom line is um, I'm here in front of you this evening, ask for the Planning Board's support uh, as we go forward with this project. I'm open to your questions. Uh, I have a few, but I want to open it up for... Uh, I had caught wind of this, actually, last year at this exact date. And um, at the 100 Good Men, where, and I was uh, very impressed with the person who spoke to me about it, and I, th I think it'll be a great thing. I, I really, Mr. Sturch was a wonderful man, and I, I'm good to go with it. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. I think it's awesome, and chatting with folks around town that have heard about it, they're really excited and enthusiastic about it. Also, also they think it'd be a great addition. So, thanks, Jamie. Support it. Again, I would support it 100%. A um, couple of comments would be, you know, talk to Roland about the building permit aspect of it and um, ADA compliance. It is, and that's with the ramp, it's precisely okay. for that reason. So yes. How tall is it going to be off the ground? Two steps. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Small ramp. So that's um, How many feet? Comments from the public? Anybody? All right. He didn't speak. <laughs> Imagine that. All right. Thumbs up all the way around. It's a good crowd. This is awesome. <laughs> I wish you were up there in the, the uh, Board of Appeals meeting. Oh, they were very nice people up there. I was kidding. I mean, I don't know if there's a vote that needs to be taken, but we'll certainly unanimously support it, the three of us. Um, I know that Rich Crowley called me tonight to let me know that he also supported it. He had gone through his package, but he's um, unable to attend tonight. So. Mark had professed uh, interest in it last year when I had mentioned it to him also. So. And uh, I think, yeah. I think well, you, you saw that slide where I had you know, support. I'd like to be able to put support beside the planning board. You so be it. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. <coughs> right on time, 715, public hearing, major commercial industrial use special permit, aquifer and water resource district special permit, setback special permit, site plan review, 119 Russell Street, Workers Credit Union. Mr. Chairman, good evening. Uh, Douglas DeShane representing the applicant in light of the fact that the board is uh, missing two members and although they, as I understand, have agreed to mowing in, uh, which would allow them to come back on the board for voting purposes, we also understand that uh, Mr. Crowley will not be at your November 2nd meeting and therefore we would in fact lose a member before we even got going. So we'd ask that uh, you continue this hearing without testimony to your next available meeting. Thank you. I got a motion. Uh, so be it. Motion second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very <coughs> much. So um, thurs Thursday, November 2nd. So there'll be no presentation whatsoever from. No. Are you going to get a Reader's Digest version? No. Not without Rich here. No. So it won't count against the rolling Well, so be it. <laughs> it was good seeing you again. Did the car fixed yet or what? Did you move? Did you move? Where'd you go? 
Wait, you don't. You only get one. You only get one. This one. Okay. You can talk. We've got three minutes before we get our next agenda. Uh, who's doing the interior? You are? Because uh, there's a guy in Hudson, Mass, that does really nice work on well, somebody else said came and said it was okay, so you're a little late on the Thank you, dear. Okay. Nice sharing. Nice sharing. Thank you. I'm going to flip the house. Upside down. Stop digging. Planes are upside down. <laughs> you see that one? Uh, no, that's fun. It's an engineer thing. See you soon. Are we done? We can go home now? No. We're waiting for 8 o'clock. We're almost there. So I, I brought us right back to time. I see. I show up. Three minutes to eight. I don't have that power? No. Let's see. We went on a little longer upstairs than I had anticipated. Okay, yeah, look, the neighbors are fine. Everything's good. And there's one there. Everyone except the, the green one. But now I have to flip that house, so I gotta look at it from the side down, backwards. She I just have it in my head. Judy you know, because the driveway is on that side. So it's always been in my head. That's a side to stick. Don't forget. <laughs> I'll have you all mad at me again. I'll show up and one wall will be built and the next morning it'll be down, right? I think it'll be nice. Went to a day long seminar on Tuesday. Okay, so there's that. Oh yeah, now I need a demo for it. Good. Where you been hiding? Starting till eight fifteen. Yeah. Even till eight. Oh, <laughs> one here on time. Right? You're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You're the first one here. So. Somehow I misunderstood, and I apologize. Come no. here. Please. Okay. You getting buckled up just to walk from there to here? You don't want to lose anything? You're making fun of me tonight. I'm not sure what you got going. I'm. I, you look like you're going out in combat. It's just a very easy way to travel. Are you yes. making fun of me? He is. No. He is. He is. He's, he's Peter. I wasn't. It's all right. It's absolutely right. There's a song about that. Okay. Come to the river when it's all right. Well, how are you? Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. There's some sentiment. Sorry. Okay, we're at 8 o'clock. Great. Public hearing zoning bylaw amendments for October 30th, 2017, special town meeting. A is a senior residential development bylaw, B is inclusionary housing zoning bylaw, and C is a temporary moratorium on marijuana facilities. Uh, public hearing zoning bylaw amendments. The Town of Littleton Planning Board will hold public hearings on Thursday, October 5th, 2017, starting at 8 p.m. in room 103 of the Shattuck Street School. Uh, sorry, Shattuck Street Town Hall, 37 Shattuck Street, Littleton, Mass. To consider amendments to the zoning bylaw according to Mass General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 5. There are three proposed zoning bylaw amendments to be considered. One, se senior residential housing, senior residential development. Zoning bylaw proposal to replace the current over 55 housing development bylaw to allow for a variety of housing type settings and residential services to meet the needs of people as they age. A senior residential development community could be allowed only by special permit from the planning board and would include age targeted design to detach single family dwellings, two family dwellings, townhouse dwellings, independent living units, assisted living residents, and or continuing care retirement community. Two. Inclusionary housing zoning bylaw proposal would increase the supply of housing that is available to and affordable for low and moderate income households, increase the diversity of housing in Littleton and develop and maintain housing that is eligible for inclusion of the subsidized housing inventory. Most new residential development would be required to include or provide substantial support for affordable housing in Littleton. 
Three, temporary moratorium on marijuana establishments would temporarily prohibit the cultivation, processing, and sale of recreational marijuana as a use under the zoning bylaw so as to allow the town sufficient time to engage in comprehensive planning process to consider amending the zoning bylaw to regulate such establishments which were first allowed by a law approved by voters in the November 8, 2016 state election which law was then replaced by chapter 55 of the acts of 2017 which the governor signed into law on July 28, 2017. This temporary monitor moratorium would not affect medical marijuana facilities and would extend through December 31st, 2018. The full text of the proposed amendments of the zoning bylaw are on file at the town clerk and planning board offices and can be viewed during their office hours or online. Any person interested or wishing to be heard on the proposed zoning amendments should appear at the time and place designated or provide written comments by October 4th, 2017. The town of Littleton does not discriminate on the basis of disability. Further, a signed translation of the hearing will be provided for the hearing impaired upon request by contacting the planning board office one week prior to the meeting date. Thank you. Julie, nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Thank you for being here. Thank you. We should open up with you talking about it. Not the moratorium for marijuana. Thank you. <laughs> I don't want to go there. Uh, so, we did a PSA. Yep. I hope you all get to see my debut on TV. My son watched it and said it was cringeworthy, so. <laughs> um, Judy, the floor. Would you like me to do an overview on this? That'd be great. And shall we use these slides to do that? That's perfectly sure. fine. Um, this has also been converted to a handout, which is back there for anybody who wants to have it to take home. Um, this is a package. We're going to talk about a package of proposals going to the town meeting, um, two of which involve zoning, and one is a uh, general bylaw. So why don't we go ahead to, um, as I said, there's three, three pieces. Let's go ahead to senior residential development, which is the first sort of substantive slide. Um, both your affordable uh, housing plan, which predates the master plan, and the master plan, which was just completed, uh, recommend that the town pursue better ways to create housing that meets the needs of seniors and the elderly than what you have today. Um, people are very familiar with the concept of downsizing, and so often senior housing bylaws sort of think about sort of small, kind of what you have today, single family or duplex units. Uh, that are intended for people who are essentially um, retirees or, or in good health or just able to kind of live fully independently. Hi there, how are you? I didn't see you back there. Um, and you have that now. Uh, what you don't have is really a zoning policy that promotes aging in community. And aging in community is a more complicated idea. Uh, and it recognizes that as people age, their needs change. Um, so this bylaw, uh, provides not only for what you have today, but also the ability for senior housing development to include uh, as what we call assisted living residences or independent uh, living units or perhaps even skilled nursing care, depending upon the type of, of application. And the reason for that is that we all recognize that as seniors age, um, their needs change and sometimes their, their needs change in a way that requires help to live on a daily basis and that that is not necessarily uh, conducive to um, to living in a freestanding house by yourself. Sometimes that works fine, sometimes it does not. So this bylaw really proposes on, focuses on providing kind of a continuum of options so that people hopefully will not have to leave Littleton uh, as they age simply because their housing needs changed in a way that uh, your existing housing stock does not provide. So it's very much focused on the concept of universal design, uh, which is a probably more important thing than whether you actually have an age restriction per se in your zoning, is to think about what it means to have a universal design, a visitable project, um, and a project that's really designed to meet the variety of needs of people, as I said, as they age. So that's one piece of the package. The second piece is the inclusionary zoning. Um, those are just sort of images of the kinds of housing that are contemplated in the senior residential development bylaw. The inclusionary zoning um, piece is, uh, is quite different from what you have today. 
Your current zoning requires that an over 55 development will include some senior, uh, some uh, affordable units for seniors. And that's the only type of development that triggers an affordable housing requirement here, so you might get some. This says, um, this takes that concept much beyond that and says any kind of residential development over a certain size will have an obligation to provide affordable units. Um, and if it's a small project, the applicant would have the ability to say, I'm going to provide the units in my development, or I really don't think I can do this, but so I'll pay a fee to a fund. Uh, and I, I do this, I work on, on inclusionary zoning probably more than anything else that I do, and I can tell you that a lot of very small developers who do small projects just can't deal with the bureaucracy of affordable housing. And so you want to be able to have a way to say, if you can do it, that's great, but if you can't do it, then you at least have to provide some sort of equivalent community benefit, uh, which is this form of a fee in lieu of units, which you don't really provide for today uh, at all. And then, but larger developments, they have to include the units. Um, but just because of the way development happens here, um, I think a lot of the projects you see are probably going to be the smaller ones. So the question then begs, well, what happens to this money that's going to come to the town for investment in affordable housing? And just to be clear, the way this is written, of course, the only way that money can be used is for affordable housing. It doesn't go in the general fund to pay for municipal services. It's a, it's a use-restricted revenue source. So the third piece of the package is the proposed Municipal Affordable Housing Trust, uh, which is not a zoning change. It is a general bylaw. What the town would be doing under this article, um, which I believe is Article 7, um, would be adopting a provision of Mass General Laws that was um, enacted by the legislature in 2004 that allows communities to establish a municipal housing trust. And some towns have had a trust for a long time. But prior to 2004, the only way you could do it was to go to the legislature with what's called a home rule petition and ask the legislature to let you set one up on your own. And we had a proliferation of these over time, and eventually the Department of Revenue said, there's too many of these creatures out there, we need to standardize this. So in 2004, the, the state law was uh, amended to provide for towns can adopt this provision and set up a housing trust. And what you do, of course, is you adopt the law, but then you also have a bylaw that, pro that specifically provides for their powers and duties and you know, limits them if you choose, but clearly that's probably not a good idea. So the trust would become the entity that invests the, um, the funds that receive from developer payments under the inclusionary zoning. Um, and they also could, depending upon what the Community Preservation Committee wants to do, the trust could also administer CPC funds for affordable housing. Now that's clearly a CPC and town meeting decision, but, uh, but it's certainly something that some communities have done in an attempt to try to build capacity for what it means to provide affordable housing. If you have a group that becomes experts in that, uh, especially in a small town, it's probably better than having different groups sort of, you know, trying to administer money for a similar purpose. So, uh, so that's what the package is, is to say we want to provide for uh, a wider range of, of housing types that are appropriate for people as they age. Uh, we want to ensure that we get some affordability out of development in the town, uh, both in terms of being able to generate a subsidy source to help really with senior housing mainly, but uh, not exclusively, uh, but then also to stay ahead of Chapter 40B's 10%, which right now you're over, and my understanding is you think you're probably going to stay over as of Census 2020. But one never knows, and so it's a good idea to try to stay ahead of the curve, and that's part of the logic of having inclusionary zoning, is that you have a way to sort of create, uh, you know, units from just organic development that's happening in your town instead of waiting for another Chapter 40B application. So that's the package, and with that, I turn it over to you, because this is really your baby, not just sort of the vehicle for drafting. <laughs> this is our baby. It's your baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. I'm all with yours. <laughs> um. To date, folks, it's the most important thing that I've worked on as a planning board member. Um, I said it a bunch of times already. It's, it's true planning. It's something I hoped we would do on this board, and I hope that uh, you know, we can get the town to support it. So I've heard the positive things you know, with the people I've spoke with so far. Um, it's important that we get it, get it approved. It has plenty of controls so that we don't get inundated with developments that we don't want. We get the opportunity to you know, make the approvals here. 
Um, if they are not something that are beneficial to the town, then they don't get approved. So this has plenty of teeth. Um, with that, any comments from you guys? <coughs> Again, it's, it's something that we're finally being proactive. You know, instead of knee-jerk reactions to everything that happens in the town, now we're going to we're kicking the ball instead of getting kicked. Never mind. But uh, I'm, I'm happy with this. I think it'll be good for the town. Thank you. Agree. Um, and for the record, Rich Crowley could call me tonight. You know, unfortunately, couldn't be here, but he did want me to announce to everybody that he could. Uh, he supported all of these. Uh, Proposals tonight. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Losing my um, I'll open it up to the floor for discussion. Please state your name for the record. Jared Opiori, New Estate and Home. I got a whole bunch of questions on the senior residential development. Okay. This thing. Uh, how has this changed from what was voted down at the town meeting last spring? So uh, last spring we lost by four votes, and I can tell you that it was uh, very disappointing for us to have lost that vote. But I think it helps us now that we have the three-part package. Um, so, but it is different, um, and I'll let Judy speak to what we did change. Um, I can give you a few examples of what changed. There are size limits now on the, on the um, single-family and duplex units. Um, there are both size limits in terms of uh, floor area, but also number of bedrooms. Um, the setback be to a residential lot for um, assisted living or independent living is much deeper now. It's 100 feet. Um, so, you know, there were some changes made to try to accommodate some of the concerns that came up at town meeting. Uh, that's mainly it. I mean, the basic philosophy is the same, but I think some of the dimensional standards have changed. Because the two biggest things that I, I was concerned about at annual town meeting are still in here. 55 foot maximum height for independent living units, mm -hmm. and you're talking about densities up to 20 units per acre. Mm -hmm. That's, in this town, that's huge in terms of density. Right. So, so to answer that, um, it's the only way that affordable housing, when I said the um, assisted living facilities, function is you want to be able to consolidate the services inside a building. So, you know, there are, there are locations in this town that can support that kind of density. Now, would I say I want to put it on the common? Absolutely not. Do we want to put it near some, you know, amenities? For sure. Would a train station be a better place for it or a location like that? Maybe. You know, we have to wait for the developers to come in with a proposal. If it doesn't, if it's not beneficial to the town, it doesn't get approved. But for, for assisted living, we need to provide that kind of density. Well, right, but the highest density isn't assisted living, it's independent living. Right, it's a different use. Right. Um, just, if it's any help to people, before we started drafting this, um, we spent a lot of time talking to developers who do this kind of housing, because if you're going to, Part of, uh, step back even further. What we were asked to do was to try to help the town come up with uh, an approach to senior housing that would be more effective than what you have today. So what do you do? You go in to talk to people in the industry, the folks who actually build this stuff. Um, otherwise, you're kind of making it up by what you think makes sense, but may not necessarily yield any results. Um, and one of the things that became very clear to us is that uh, in order to actually get this kind of development in your community, there has to be a market basis to the investor to do it. Um, you're asking a, uh, sometimes a, a senior uh, who's not in an affordable unit to pay a little more to live in independent living than they would in a regular apartment. So you have to have a way to sort of make it a more competitive product. In order to do that, you need amenities in the development. In order to accommodate all of this, you end up needing a certain amount of density to actually support those amenities. Otherwise, you don't get the development. So we spent a lot of time just trying to understand what's actually been built out there, uh, what the investors are looking for, and that's kind of what underlies the proposals. And so I realize it's probably different from what you have now, but we were asked to help you come up with something that's different than what you have now. Well, yeah, basically, you're letting the developers write the bylaw. No, we're, no. we're actually we're letting close. planners write the bylaw. Right. Yeah. The need is, we have a need. And, and whether you, the only way to get that need met is, is, to, is to really, like Judy said, is to talk to the people that actually can <clears throat> provide that needed product for you. And, she, and everything she said, if you listen to her, and, it makes sense. 
why why draw a pie in the sky that you can can never get to? We have all the things in order to accommodate what we need and to accomplish what this town really is looking for from what us as a board and, and being elected by you all to, to, to produce. And again, this is, it's as close as you're going to get to acquire the goals we need and we should have for our elderly, for the town. And, and she's done a fantastic job at it. No, I'm just, I just see this as, yeah, that's the positive. The negative is this nothing's really, free. This can really open the door to high density development. Yes. High density development for the elderly, for, for, for products that we need in this town. And again, they have to come in front of the board before they are approved. If, it has, if, it, if it's not if beneficial. It, so, I mean, you've got to make sure you elect people that, that have the same mindset yeah. as the town is looking for. You know, and it's not just somebody that, you know, I, I don't know other way to put it, but it's, it, this, this one is it's as close to perfection I think we're going to get for a town like this. And on, on, on top of this, we spend a lot of time with the seniors in this town to come up with these proposals. And we've had nothing but from support from our seniors. So, uh, Like I said, I'm a, I'm a senior and I still feel a lot more independent than uh, moving into one of these highly managed developments. So it's not... And you're one of the lucky ones. Yeah, you're yeah. fortunate that that's the situation. So. Tie one leg behind your back and see how well you get along for a week. Hey, I hear you. I was I've been laid up. I, I manage. Right. Anybody else? Mr. Bergman. Keith Bergman, Town Administrator. Uh, first, I want to commend the Planning Board for bringing these measures forward as a package. Uh, I think it's worth met, entering into the minutes of your uh, public hearing that uh, these three uh, measures are three of the five housing strategies that are in the adopted master plan. So, so we, uh, we had a very uh, inclusive process involving the community over the last couple of years. It had a specific action plan of things that the community said it wanted done. There were five recommendations for housing. You've already done one with the accessory apartment yeah. by law, and here are three more. And the other one was to, uh, was to allow greater density where it makes sense, and we're working on that with the funding that we're doing to, to explore a, a smart sewer for Littleton Commons. So in a way, we're moving on all five of, the, of those five, and I think that, that, that you're to be commended for your leadership in doing that, and that the master plan is meant to be implemented, and so, so good for you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Got a master plan, right? And we're actually... Adhering to it. Yeah. Hey. It's it's exciting. I'm really I'm excited about it. Please. Uh, Mary Hunt, Hetzel Road and Littleton. Um, I've been one of the seniors that's been somewhat active in this and attended a lot of the planning board meetings and listened to Judy for a long time. And I worked in the social service field with elderly for 38 years with the state, so I have a fairly a lot of knowledge about seniors. This is an excellent plan. I have to commend you, Judy. It's an excellent plan that will put Littleton on the road to what Littleton needs. The unfortunate thing about this, it will not benefit seniors or seniors now. Five years, ten years down the road, it will benefit the millennia who are living in Littleton now who want to stay here. That's what's critical about this plan. They will get to stay here. And that's what's critical about and important about this plan. Um, You'll be here in five years. Don't you give me that. <laughs> well, I plan to be here until I'm 100, so there you go. <laughs> that's all right. I want to see this put in place. And you're 38 after, now, right? I really want to see this put in place after having been through it for a while. Um, it's, it's the best I've seen for a long time. And uh, I highly recommend that we can go forward with this. I'm talking it up. I was Thank at the you. meeting this morning, and we had 20 members, 20 seniors almost, at that meeting this morning listening to this. So that, that's a positive vibe compared to the limited number of here. I got a call from Marge Payne, uh, Chair for Council on Aging, the other night, and her and I will be doing a presentation October 12th. What time? 
1030. 10.30. 10.30, thank because I have to be there so I have to ask the question. So. <laughs> but I have one question about the, um, the trust fund committee. Sure. Um, do you know how that would be established? Be appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Board of Selectmen. Yes. Um, that is, in a town with a Board of Selectmen format, that's the way it's typically done. Um, and the composition of the board is kind of laid out in the first part. Um, there will be seven members, one being a member of the Board of Selectmen, the town administrator or the town administrator's designee. This, by the way, is all very standard. Um, I was not being too creative with this. I wanted this to just be as close to the statute as possible. Uh, one, a member of the Littleton Housing Authority, um, the Council on Aging, and three residents who uh, would bring some kind of experience to the trust, such as real estate or banking or whatever. So that would be the composition. And as I said, it would be you know, appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Have a question. Sure. How, how will this plan affect uh, area, uh, uh, a facility that currently has the 40, that runs under the 40 B plan? Um, so, if I understand the question, we're going to try to get ahead of any more affordable units coming in under a 40B plan because we're going to create our own. Through any development that comes in under inclusionary zoning, they'll either have to provide affordable housing or they'll pay to the trust fund, which then we can provide affordable units. So, we should never again see a 40B if this all goes well. So, the 40Bs that are currently in place? Would remain in place? Oh, yes. They, yes. Yeah. Those are all. Yeah. They're, they're this here, doesn't they're, disturb those yeah. existing. No, they stay. So. Judy, you know, if they uh, didn't, you'd fall below 10%. Right. So. right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Did uh, the 40Bs that are in current use right now, do they are they perpetually in 40Bs? Some are. Some are. Aren't in a better oh. position to answer that question. Most, than most are. are. Most are. Because we, didn't, we, uh, didn't part of King Street mm -hmm. fall off? No. The one down at no. Pondside or something? No. Um, they were scheduled to, but then they refinanced, and that refinancing brought them to a longer period. Yeah. How much longer? longer. Um, I can share that information yeah. with you. I don't it have it. It might be like 2024, I think. Yeah. We have a total of 50 so-called expiring use permits mm -hmm. uh, uh, among our uh, countable units on the subsidized housing inventory. And from the group that monitors those, uh, those units to make sure that we can continue to count them. We have the indication that the owner will, will want to refinance them and keep them countable even when, when they would otherwise expire. We're going to keep our eye on that ball though because if, if, if some or all of those 50 fall off then we come parallelly close to 10 percent. But it's our expectation that we'll be able to work with the with the property owner to keep them countable. And, and I would just point out. Anyways, right, form? Well it can be. If it's working if it's working, then typically they'll want to refinance. But I will just point out that a town not too far from here almost lost a rental development a few years ago that was expiring use. Uh, actually, there were more problems with the project than just that. They had a housing trust. They had CPA funds. They, they, they granted a mortgage to keep that prop property affordable. Um, and part of that negotiation was uh, a 40-year agreement to, con to continue to keep them affordable. So having a housing trust is a big deal right. because the longer, you've got basically a local finance agency. Right. And the longer we can push those leases out, the more we can put into the right. trust fund and it's, the more affordable units we can provide on right. our own. So if they ever did fall off 40 years from now, you should be above it anyway. Right. Please. Yeah, that, that's the one part of this I do support is this town has been run over roughshod by developers with 40B. And for those who don't realize it, 40B is a bit of a numbers game. And I've seen that units come on and all of a sudden they drop off, now they count against you, and it just keeps perpetuating itself. As I understand it, if the town goes one unit under, a developer can build what? Almost 200 units? If you're not at 10 percent. In worst case, if you fell below, yeah. if you fell below 10 percent even by one unit, then then you, uh, under current rules, you uh, you're vulnerable. Forty B right. could come in for another 200 units. That's correct. Mm -hmm. so, and that's right. from what I saw down on uh, 119, didn't they have ways of all of a sudden units, if they're rental, they're 40B for longer than if they suddenly turn a condo or vice versa? Like, every project's different. Right. It's kind of hard to generalize. You get these projects that are imposed on the town by the state, and then after a while, they don't even count towards your quarter, they count against you. So that having the inclusionary at least gives us half a chance to protect ourselves. All your state rep. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're right. You're welcome. <laughs> I, I just have put one other comment or question. Sure. But Please state I, your name for the record. I'm, my name is Claire Bell. And you are from? From Littleton. Uh, but I'm just, I'm new in the area. Address? You just you give oh, it a Address? Yeah. Uh, 119. No, I'm sorry. It's off of 119. 17 <laughs> boxes Drive. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I'm new to Massachusetts. I've only been here a year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, moved in because of family. Um, Welcome. Thank you. And I, I, I really do love it in this area. Um, what I've found is I just moved in. Uh, I, it was a culture shock uh, for rentals in this area. Uh, I mean, I sold a house to come mm -hmm. down here. But uh, still, I couldn't afford to buy a house here. Um, so I couldn't afford a condo, when I, so I decided to rent. Um, as far as renting, you know, fixed income. So I, I looked into affordable housing and I applied everywhere and where I got uh, accepted first, the first place, that's where I went. Um, but after their one year, they raised my rent by 90%. Well, my social security didn't go up 90%, mm -hmm. you know. So if Nine or 90? Nine percent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, an extra $162 in my month you know, that I needed to come up with. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, if, and if this is going to be, you know, a constant thing, then I, I can't do that. I'm just going to have to leave. Uh, so is this a new uh, constru construction that will be coming along in the future under this new plan, will there be some type of um, control of that? How much your rent can go up every month? There is a the, every year. It's it's governed by what's called an affordable affordable housing restriction, which is recorded with the Registry of Deeds. Um, your story isn't the first time I've heard this kind of problem. You have a couple of issues going on here in Littleton. One is. You're on the outer edge of what's called the Boston metro area. And the rents and the income limits and everything around affordable housing in Chapter 40B are governed by the income limits that come out of Boston. And so the, the farther you are from the city, the less relevant some of those income limits and rents are to the actual lives of people out here. Um, so I suspect that the project is complying with its regulatory agreement because otherwise they'd be in big trouble with somebody. But but there's always a tension with these affordable developments between wanting to keep the rents as low as you can and the insistence by banks, the lenders, to have the project be as profitable as possible so that it doesn't go under. And in that tension, you have developers who I know people may not like, but they didn't write all these rules. A lot of them did, did not come from the developers who were living with them. Um, there's this tension around trying to keep the project affordable and not losing good tenants and yet keeping the banks happy because the banks expect to see a profitable development. So I don't know what the regulatory agreement says on that development. I don't want to comment on it um, except to say that, um, you know, rent increases happen in these projects and I hope it's being monitored properly. That's all I can say. Um, that seems like a kind of high rent increase to me, but I, I don't know what the regulatory well, agreement I, says. I, I complain about it. Yeah. I, I don't know what and, the and restrictions they are. And half. So they were able to give me a four and a half instead of a Well, that is good to know. <laughs> so people have to speak up. Yes. 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 Thank you, Vanessa. No problem. We were just doing some math. Okay. Doing some math. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go back to the old ways. Any other comments, questions? No, so we need to move this. It's a public hearing. We need to move it, put it on the warrant articles. Um, no. Right. Um, and decide mm -hmm. if you're going to take first take up the um, temporary mar marijuana moratorium or if you want to take your other votes first. That's um, well, if we take our votes now, we can. Judy can move along, you know, to stay here for the discussion. I, I think I'm always entertained when I'm here, so whatever, <laughs> you know, if you need me to stay, of course I'll stay, so. Uh, yeah, I think we should do them each individually, even though we're even though we're presenting them as a package at town meeting, we yeah. should put them all on individually. So go for it. So I'll make a I'll make a motion to 
Push forward article number five, the zoning amendment, senior residential housing development to the town annual town meeting. So it'd be a, would be a vote to recommend. Yeah. Is, did I say that? No? That's what I heard. Yeah, right? I'll make a motion to recommend. Yeah. Um, to move this forward to the forward for town meeting. Mm -hmm. Annual town meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next. Aye. Zoning amendment, inclusionary housing. We we discussed it. So. Oh, okay. okay. Then, all right. So um, I'll make a motion to move Article Number Six to recommend. To recommend Article Number Six, uh, the zoning amendment, inclusionary housing, uh, to annual town meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And? Is the third one? The purple one. I know what you're saying. There's so many different one papers one for, one for the same thing. Yeah. That one? No. This one? You just do that. Huh? On, the, on the trust, are you simply taking the vote to support it? Is that yes. what the plan is? Yeah. This, this is the one that we. I'll make a motion to recommend we move um, the Municipal <coughs> Affordable Housing Trust Article Number no. Seven toward two t annual town meeting. Special town meeting. Special town meeting. Don't you love it when everybody's correcting you? <laughs> Don't you just love this? Second. <laughs> All those in favor. Aye. 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 All right. Now, <laughs> many words. Zoning amendment. Still screwed. We haven't talked about the temporary moratorium mm -hmm. on marijuana establishments. Uh, you know, this this article it. 13 came out. Do you um, need me to stay? Do you, I mean, do you not want me to stay? We don't. No. Okay. Thank you very much, Judy. I just want to know one thing. Do you have delicata squash now? Not yet. Okay. When's it going to be out? Yeah. It's still no. pretty green. Okay. All right. Fine. Another Sorry. week or so. Like <laughs> I know she loves it. Anthony. Anthony. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for coming. I think he wants to start. I'll talk to this one. Make a motion to. Uh, well, let's let's. We should probably read it for the right. Discuss it. Read this whole thing. Well, so let's discuss it while they're wrapping up in here. Um, this new moratorium for the marijuana establishment it is in sync with what the state recommended. Um, it basically is what the state recommended. Um, there was concern concern that our original. Uh, moratorium wouldn't be supported by the AG's office, but it turns out it was legal at the vote. Um, so we have one in place until next annual town meeting. However, this one brings the town more in line with what the state has recommended for a moratorium. Um, you know, it kills me. The state, they go through this, or they can't make it a mind up. What, three years now? They can't make a mind up about this? Three years? No, they're, they're still working on it. They're working on it. They're trying. They've established a board. It took them 30 days to, to uh, change some, something when a judge went up, uh, got charged again for something. It took them 30 days to change the law there. Yeah, I wonder who profits from what. Political. Mm -hmm. um, Crap. So after a year of research and, and understanding the. the uh, Where's my? Go ahead. You hit it on me. You <laughs> it was over there to start with. Uh -huh. And I didn't hide it. My back's been killing me. What's his name? Jerry. 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 You can have the conversation outside if you'd like. So. Hi, Judy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption, folks. Is this open, uh, the public yet? We haven't started public comment yet. We're still reviewing it. Um, so I started to say that after getting a year of education on the moratorium and understanding it a little bit better, um, support I would support a motion for this, but I want to open it up to a discussion on the board first. I have no discussion. So the changes on this specific article versus what we have on file now that was acceptable is what? So Just one, to clarify with. So it's, it's in line with what the state's moratorium is um, and what their recommendations are from the AG's office. It also extends it um, out a little bit longer than what ours, others will expire. Our original one expires at our next annual town meeting. Well, uh, August of 2018, this one would extend four more months through December 31st of 2018. Yeah. 
Right. Yeah. Okay, so that's the only difference, right. and, it, and, it, and it aligns with the state. Okay. Any discussion? Mr. Bergman. Uh, Keith, Keith Bergman, Town Administrator. Uh, I did ask uh, Town Council to uh, submit a letter to the Planning Board tonight, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Made, uh, today, which summarizes uh, a bunch of things, specifically in what way does this bylaw uh, differ from the moratorium that was passed in May? How is the, and frankly, to tell us how the world has changed since May, because the statute that the governor signed in July is very different from the, the uh, referendum ballot question that passed last May. We adopted our, our, last November, I should say, the town meeting vote that we took in May established uh, a uh, complete uh, moratorium on all recreational marijuana uses through August of next year. The, um, it, you, you recall that because that article, that because that moratorium hadn't been approved yet by the Attorney General and we had to make a decision whether to put an article into the special town meeting warrant or not before it closed, we chose to, to err on the side of caution and put one in. The one that was written by town council at, at the, uh, for this town meeting was was, as the chair said, is written around the new statute, not, not the old one. It's written around what the governor signed. Specifically, uh, the, the, what we're seeking to change in this bylaw, though, or accomplish a, a number of things, including uh, even after the article was, was received by us, uh, the, the board of selectmen voted to make the uh, last minute change at the request of our existing uh, recreational, uh, 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 sorry, medicinal uh, marijuana establishments, sanctuary medicinals. Sanctuary asked to be excluded from the bylaw, so that, uh, from the moratorium, I should say, um, because they felt that they would be in a better uh, uh, position with the state to get their, to turn their medicinal state license into a recreational license. Uh, the Board of Selectmen didn't have objection to that. We have a host community agreement that envisions that, that at some point Jason and his group could move from recreational to, from, right. from medicinal to recreational if the law changed. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so that's one thing that's different. The, the, by, the bylaw that was passed in May would have applied to sanctuary. This one would not. It would have been. However, this bylaw does not allow sanctuary to get their local zoning permit. That would, could only happen if, if and when we amend the zoning bylaw to allow recreational, which would take an action by your board to bring it to town meeting. We could do it in May, mm -hmm. but we haven't done it yet. The other thing that happens is, under the new law that was, that was uh, signed by the governor in July, if a community wants to limit the number of licenses that get issued for recreational purposes, or to exclude licenses altogether, or to exclude certain types. For example, if we didn't want to have dispensaries, but we were okay with cultivation sites, that's an exclusion. Or if, or if you look at our current uh, medicinal bylaw, it allows precisely one uh, license, and you've already issued it. You have, you, we'll need to talk about how many licenses for, rec for recreational do you want. Are you okay with one? Do you want more? And what the new law signed by the governor says, if you limit it in any way, you can only do those limits by first bringing a ballot question to an election. And then after the voters either give you the authority to limit it or not, then you, then you march to the next town meeting and you adopt a bylaw. Now for us what that means is our next election is in May of 2018. If the desire is to exclude dispensaries or to limit the number of cultivation sites to some finite number, that would have to go to a ballot question at the May annual town election. After that, you, there would then be a zoning bylaw that you would bring forward no sooner than the next town meeting after that, which would be the fall of 2018. So that brings you up to October, November. This, by, this moratorium proposes to take you to December. So. And believe, and believe me, you will need that additional time to do it. So those those are basically the changes. Thank you for pointing out the uh, sanctuary medicinals request for exemption. I was unaware of that. 
So. Just a, a quickie if we turn around and, and uh, make exclusions to this and say we can have one medicinal and one recreational and no recreational, one medicinal sale point and we limit it to one or we limit it to zero, that still has to go in front of the Attorney General, correct? It has to be a ballot question. Yeah, regardless of the ballot question, when we're all done taking our votes, the Attorney General is going to say whether you can or cannot have 117 or 30, 352 in town, it's correct? True. Yes, that's that's so true. So this is almost moot. Well, it's true, but our, our but what what would happen is that if you decide, unlike the first bylaw, I, I will say because of the requirement to go to a ballot question first to limit the number of licenses, if that had been in place for our medicinal marijuana, it wouldn't have passed mm -hmm. the, the attorney general's uh, review. But no such rule existed then. We're fine with the with the uh, medicinal bylaw. But for a recreational, it's the, the law, the new law says, if you want to limit the number of permits that get issued in your zoning bylaw, you have to get permission from your voters at a ballot question but first. But the Attorney General has approved that. Has approved the, the, the availability for us to limit the number of recreational licenses. Yes or no, that's yes. what you just said. Yeah. Yeah, well, it hasn't come to the Attorney General because, for ruling because it's at the cannabis control not to and they only got inside baseball, but it's the state's cannabis control commission, which even now is only starting to meet and starting to adopt what its rules are going to be. So in three more years, we'll be having this discussion again. I think. I think that. I think the most reasonable thing that we could shoot for is if this by if this bylaw passes with a moratorium on um, all dispensaries, a moratorium saying no recreational dispensaries until and unless town meeting allows them by future zoning. <clears throat> what that would allow us to do is to go back and address recreational cultivation sites. And you could bring a recreational cultivation site by law to the May town meeting because it's not subject to a, to a uh, uh, moratorium. Mm -hmm. So it would be reasonable to, to do that. Uh, <clears throat> and then if you, and then have the ballot question if it's if it's the uh, your your recommendation and the, and the selectman's determination to limit or the number of uh, dispensary licenses that has to go to an election first next May. If it, if the voters give permission to limit or, or 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 deny licenses, then it goes to a town meeting okay. in in November of next year. So. Keith, thank you for that. Any other comment from the chair? Yeah, I, I want to thank Keith for uh, straightening out the timeline because I read this. I read the state statute, and it looks to me like in the statute, it's within the town's right by to zone out recreational marijuana in its entirety if they so choose. I didn't realize. I know you have to bring it before the town voters, but that's only for communities that voted affirmatively for the uh, state marijuana ballot initiative, right? Which we did, with 53% favor. I wasn't aware that the timeline was you had to bring it to the voters before you could bring it to town meeting. Yeah. So that would make perfect sense for the moratorium. And I'm not going to be a wise guy and ask if this is going to a joint committee. But I'm pumped. Um. So make a motion to uh, accept the moratorium on marijuana distribution and moratorium on marijuana establishments. On what? Marijuana establishments. Supported at the uh, special town meeting. So be it. Um, Second. Would, do we have to make a mention for the exemption for? It's no, you don't, because the article as posted. Okay. If you if you are, if you recommend the article as posted, it would it would contain that exemption. Okay. For that. <coughs> my language that I recommended is posted for the uh, special town meeting. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. For the record, I vote against any recreational <coughs> marijuana growing, selling, eating, smoking. Biting, I don't care what it is. It's all junk. In my opinion. <coughs> Item five, Turkey Farm Estates. Yeah. Progress continues on Turkey Farm Estates. The report from Geo Insight is attached. We've got that. <coughs> I've reviewed that. <coughs> 
Jeffrey, how are you? Thank you. Steve? Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, for the record, Joe Fesnola. Um, to continue the discussion on on uh, Turkey Farm, um, I'll jump to item B first, just to up, update the, the board. I think you know that we've got a um, letter from Geo Insight. We reviewed um, the farmer's pond issue, uh, presented their findings made um, some recommendations or, or some uh, critique of our analysis. Um, we have looked at uh, that and, and tweaked the calculations based on their recommendations. I, I won't bore you with the technical details of it, but uh, the, the end result was really no change to our conclusions with regards to what, hap what, what, what happens or what theoretically happened pre-development and what we're proposing post-development, um, especially regarding the proposed cross culvert that would that would put in that would be put in to um, to alleviate any um, reoccurrence of that high flooding in that farmer's pond area. So I know we we did not get the um, the calculations and so forth uh, in until uh, yesterday, so those those will be forwarded to Geo Insight for for further review. But again, um, it, it didn't result in any change to to the conclusions that were drawn from that. Um, so we haven't seen the calculations or the science has come back, right? Right. Um, so for the record, I know you don't want to go into the science a little bit, but I do, and I just want to talk about in the Geo Insight letter um, in their review the soil classification from an A to a D, and then when you run your model to see how it works, it still works as if no no modifications need to be made to the drainage system. No, not excluding the culvert. I know that's a different scenario. So, no. I mean, essentially, what they're saying is, in this type of soil, um, you have hydraulic soil groups. A, B, C, and D. Um, a is sand, it's very permeable. Um, D is not. Uh, in this type of soil, there's a kind of a nuance. This is an A slash D. And when you drill down on it, in the, how, what the definition of an A slash D is, is essentially is if water table is within 24 inches of the surface, you change the classification from an A to a D. Um, so they questioned whether in this farmer's pond area next to the farmer's <coughs> pond in the area where the flooding occurred, whether or not the, the, the water table was within 24 inches. Um, we, in, in our uh, field visit with them, we kind of assented to it. Yeah, we didn't do testing down there because we're not proposing any septic systems or drainage facilities in there. So yeah, in that area, um, it, it, it could be looked at from a D. <laughs> the issue is, I mean, the, the reason it doesn't really make a difference uh, or that much of a difference is you do the same thing in your pre-development and your post-development. So you call it a D in your pre-development, which means less water is going into the soil, so more water is kind of there during the storm event. But in the post-development condition, we're not changing that area, so the same thing has happened. Um, so what what essentially happens is, is when you look at how high it stages in pre-development and in, in in our calculations versus using the D soils, it stages a little higher, and in post-development it does the same thing. And there's a little bit more flow out over that saddle in the pre-development, and there's a little bit more flow in in the post development in that, but there's still less than, post is still less than pre. And the engagement of that cross, con cross pipe is still the same as what's happening in that saddle. So we're still mimicking what happened in pre development should that area have breached that saddle and gone down to the major wells. So we still, still believe that. Uh, 
putting the pipe in is the right thing to do and putting it where we said it should be put is the right thing to do so I think that the you know what, what geo insight is going to conclude is 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 that and um, I would ask the board to um, you know to, to then consider actually approving the the cross code um, I, there is a question as to the process with regards to how we uh, how the board needs to do that uh, I would submit to you that that this is not part of the attenuation system we are not looking at this as one of the structural BMPs that we're utilizing for treatment recharge or attenuation mm -hmm. it is something that is is trying to make sure that post development post development conditions on the site as a whole are mimicking pre-development um, and replacing that you know that saddle that has been overcome by the placement of the roadway um, so that so that this farmers farm flooding it flooding doesn't it doesn't doesn't happen in the manner that it does again so, um, I would ask the board in in light of that um, you've got geo insights input um, which is the most critical thing technical peer review um, that I, I submit that the the board should be able to approve this administratively as a field change okay um. There's a couple other items that were supposed to be discussed as well. Um, Dave, I know you had some concerns regarding uh, the peer review from Green International occurring once a week and the cost that that was incurring, as well as their regular visits. Um, I want to discuss with the board what our thoughts are, but I want to hear from you first. So, so what I what I questioned was that Friday visit, which was n nothing more than we, we weren't burying anything, we weren't laying any asphalt, n nothing that was, I would say, subgrade that needed to be inspected prior to burying or, or covering. Um, it just seemed to be a random visit on a Friday afternoon, and I mean that respectfully towards Green, but it was you know we were changing out the silt sacks, which we do on a regular basis. Um, site guys were on site. I think was reported we had a major rainfall the day prior, so the detention ponds had filled up. Um, and there really wasn't, in my opinion, a lot to report there, and I was wondering why they were. Uh, first of all, I had asked what that site visit was costing me. I did not get an answer to that. I asked repeatedly um, and, and got zero response, which I, f I feel, perhaps I'm wrong, but I do feel I'm entitled to as I'm paying the bills to see what, what I'm being charged. Um, and then I suggested that I, d I didn't quite understand what was the purpose to the visit. And, and I don't know that I got a response to that either. Okay. Um, I don't fault anybody for that, but I, I do feel that if we're, um, the site's under control at this point, in my opinion. There's um, no orders or conditions from anybody, no, from conservation, conservation right now. Still have an open enforcement <coughs> order on the farmer's pond because they were waiting for Q insight. Okay. Yeah. okay. And the uh, farmer's pond stabilized. We pumped, but we they were, it yeah. mm -hmm. with, their, with their approval, and it stayed where it's supposed to stay. Mm -hmm. and, um, the other ponds are functioning. They fill up. They drain. Pond number three drains slowly. We right. we are trying to get to rebuild that with some dry weather. But I think it's a pretty static condition out there. Okay. Yeah. They did release lot seven, which is the the built house that was adjacent to it. Right, right adjacent to the farmer's yeah. pond. Technically, the the one EO that they they're leaving is lot thirty, which is the vacant lot behind lot seven. And they're just kind of doing that from a manager of, um, uh, standpoint of leverage. To make sure that Geo Insights report is is done, and if there were any recommendations that came out of it, were done. And I think, given the the, the contents of the report, uh, next time we go visit conservation, we should get that released. Right. We're upwards of 30 visits for you know 38 hour feet of road we've built. Right. Well, we've built 20. And I know you we can understand what our concern was absolutely. originally when we established the once a week. And we acquiesced to their multiple visits, but I think at this point now we're. I and I've been through the site several times, and I would say that, in my opinion, the site is under control. Um, I would entertain a motion from the board to reduce the uh, number of visits from once a week um, to as needed. Um, and on here, we I discussed it a little bit and thought maybe every three weeks, but even at that, I don't know that it's required. 
open the discussion with my board members. Well, you said that they showed up after a, a heavy rain. It was You said they came out on a Friday and it rained heavily on a Thursday and the pond was full again. Yeah. Not the pond, the detention ponds. Were no, not, I'm sorry, not the farmer's pond or, or its surrounding area. These are the detention basins which are released from the catch basin. So they're, they're performing their job. The ponds, the retention ponds, or it's saying green is doing the job? Oh, perhaps both. But it's the retention okay. ponds are doing their job. Now, your discussion about the the farmer's pond, I mean, you said that the uh, the modeling and the such is the water is two feet down when it rains. And this one matches that one because it went from an A to a D, and now you're going to tell me you want to take a pipe and put a pipe in to take the water from from the from the farm pond and drain it that way. Is that what you're saying to me? That's what it sounded like. Yeah, but but, but but it's but it's a but it's a relief it's a relief pipe that doesn't engage in in one inch of rain or the two year storm or the ten year storm and and just slightly engages in the in the hundred year storm. So we're 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 talking what have about we been getting here for, for that water to come up to the to the to the to the baseline of house seven or whatever that lot right but we that that was a, that was a situation which is is no in our opinion can't happen again because we've we've you we've just curbed said it, it rained i'm sorry to interrupt you but you said it just rained yeah and the pond filled up no no, no. he was talking about was talking temp pond two and three the detention the pond temporary mm -hmm. sediment pond the farm pond did not fill up correct but the soil still is still it, it, it constitutes a, a, a gathering of water. It, it promotes it. The soil in the farm pond. The soil, the soil next to the farm pond, because water table is at times within 24 inches under the under the guidelines. You've got to treat it as a different okay. type of soil. Okay. So it's still sand. It's just the water because the water's here. Because further There's no down place for it to go to park keeping it up. If the water was, was way down, there'd be plenty of sand for it to drain in. How far down do they dig when they do the, their geo tests or whatever? We, we drive a pipe down, they pull out and, and, and look at it like they do cores in, in the Arctic or to see the no, ice. No, we, we've, we've done... You dig a hole with an excavator? They dig, right? dig a hole with an excavator. Right. Yeah. And how far down did you go? We've we've gone all over the site. Any any <coughs> matters of depth, but specifically yeah. in the wetland adjacent to the farmer's pond, there was no hole. There was no hole. Yeah. They, they estimated two feet. We acquiesced because we, the AD from A to AD doesn't change anything for us. Yeah. So if you go no deeper than two feet, and we just knew, but we just knew. I was curious: is what is under two feet? What's down six feet? What's eight feet down? Is it a ledge? Is it never going to change? That's why I was curious as to what was causing the water level to stay at two feet below grade. That's why I was curious. It's I, I think it's just it's the nature of the topography. You've got a de, you've got a depression there, and 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 and, and this is this is seasonal. This is and it doesn't stay there within 24 inches all year round. It's whenever we talk about groundwater, we talk about estimated seasonal high groundwater. Okay. I, I was at a property where it's synonymous. Every basement's getting pumped 24/7. Well, I dug down nine feet and never saw anything. I said, well, how, how that can be. And you're right, there are different seasons where the groundwater is much higher than others. Yeah. So this pipe that you want to put in, and it doesn't seem to be an issue is, you know, after your explanation for that, but I still was curious of why the water is so high. You know, and, and again, it flows. It's not like surface water where it's level. Yeah. It's, it's, I've seen some strange... I mean, the, w the way that this farmer's pond... So yeah. the, the way the farmer's pond area is going to work is there's going to be water in the, in the pond proper that's always been there. That's 15 feet deep, and it's, it's a pond. Occasionally, that will that will slightly spill its banks. In the hundred-year storm, it's gonna it's gonna get uh, from elevation 262 to 263. There might be a foot, and two, at 263, that's when it starts to engage that the pipe. cross pipe pipe that we're gonna we're, we're gonna. See. So by and large, right. that peripheral area is gonna be grass. All right, I understand. Thank you. All right, so that's that. Um, getting back to the site visits with green and occurring every week and moving it away from every week to as needed or every three weeks or every three years, every three months, you guys have any recommendations? 
So if, if I may add one other piece, and sorry if I'm cutting you off there, I, I did meet with Chris started on site, your okay. DPW director, your PED, uh, and, and we talked a little bit about this process, and, and, and I'll let him speak for himself if you prefer to speak to him directly, but he did suggest, or I guess um, he did see my point of view that if we were burying something, whether it be your RCP or your water line, the water department's there for the water line, but if we were burying drainage or if we were uh, process gravel or sub-base or laying asphalt or any of those things that, again, you can't see if you drive through the site, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think we both agreed that it, it's completely appropriate to have a third party there to inspect. And in our, on our end, we initiate those inspections with Green because we understand that's the process. Right. And I don't think uh, Chris quite has the manpower under his belt yet to, yeah, to, we, to send the We don't want to impose that on our DPW. Correct. So it's, it's third right. party. We understand that we don't put the RCP in and we don't do the subgrade and we don't do the road prep without notifying Green because we want to protect ourselves with a third party inspection there or at least okay. they're going to ask us to dig it up. So we're all on the same page there. Um, I don't think he felt that that site visit that we, we were um, questioning was necessary at the time, right. nor does he feel that it's, uh, and again, I'd let him speak for himself, but um, that, that the frequency was, was justified because, again, we're, you know, we're pushing 30 visits. Right. And I know we had some trouble, but I don't know that we're in that situation now and hopefully never again. I would and, agree. And rain, rainfall, you know, we said heavy, they came out after a heavy rain. I've seen many monitoring requirements be tied to a certain amount of rain. Like if there's an inch of rain in, in a 24-hour period, then they'll come out and see how things are run. Well, I, I will suggest that the two, the two detention basins in question, Basin 2 and Basin 3, 2 is functioning. We've seen that repeatedly. Um, basin 3 n needs the rebuild, and, and I will suggest that the conservation agent is very diligent in her visits post-rain. Uh, we walked we walked the sill fence line together with our contractor. We check check the silt bags mm -hmm. with her, and we do review those uh, ponds as well. So, I feel like we're getting um, adequate so, coverage. Okay. Marn, mm -hmm. is it is it okay for us to ask if the conservation agent can continue to do those and not only report to their board, but maybe give us an update, and then we can alleviate the pressure of Green being there every three weeks? Is that um, all green, green? I can ask Amy to, to share her reports, and if there's a time that she's not going to be out there, just to notify me, and then we can determine if, if we need to pull Green in, in at that point. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. that's. Okay. That, I'm, I'm looking to take the, the, mm -hmm. the burden off of the developer as far as the payment goes to <coughs> the third party and only be required when he's burying mm -hmm. uh, Oh, we don't want you burying stumps. No, sir. <laughs> be a violation of our order of conditions. All right, so so let's so let's take care of this one yeah. first. I am not. I'm okay with the idea of approving it administratively. Unfortunately, we're missing two other members, and I would like to hear them weigh in before we approve it administratively. So, the cross culvert, in my opinion, should be looked at by all five members, um, and then I think it should be done. No issue. And we could even do it if they wanted to molinize themselves on it and just. And is this something that uh, Green has weighed in on already? And this. No, no, they haven't. Nobody's weighed in on this side of this this pipe. Geo Insight. I believe Green's been replaced by Geo Insight for this particular for this issue. issue. And their and their. Their contract doesn't. Their their contract doesn't say that. So. I don't know how that would be. Well, well then we're going to have to ask. But I would, I'm not opposed to having Geo Insight take over on this one and. You could pay them instead of Green for the review. I feel like Green has has opined on on the pipe and its sizing, but then we referred the the pre and post development um, data to the hydrogeologist for their opinion, which I think we've received. So I think if we look back in our minutes or look back in Green's notes, I do I do believe they've opined on on the the, the cover to be placed and also agreed with the sizing. And then I, that's where I think we had some questions regarding whether or not they were qualified to assess the hydrogeology when mm -hmm. we moved to, to GEO inside. So I, I think that work's done. It may be worth a review of the file. Okay. And then if we're going to come back to your board for, for a, a, a vote of all your members, I think we, we would have that information unless you have something to add. And, and we'd have a chance to review it, too. And then we can have a discussion with Green and right? yeah. yeah. That's a fair assessment. I'd go along yeah. with that, would you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what you wanted in the first place. 
Exactly. Could have stopped all this a long time ago. Well, and let me add, if they haven't opined or we can't find that in the notes, then maybe we, we would agree to let them review. Or to, to do that uh, one step more. Either party. Yeah. Either party. You're paying a bill either way. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever that the bill cat again. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever um, the bill is. I'm good. All right, so I would entertain a motion on the first part of our outline here. Um, to reduce the amount, amount of inspections from weekly to as required from Green International. If I can get a motion on that. I'd like to make a motion that uh, the visits from Green International are one, when the contractor needs them there to inspect uh, the filling, grading, stuff that would, would ordinarily cause re- uh, Re-excavation to, to visit subsurface to work. Right, so subsurface work. So those are generally as outlined in the subdivision rules and regs. Okay. Then, then following that, and and there, should there be an inch and a half of rain in a 24-hour period? I mean, they came out after. We just, uh, we just and the conservation out. agent is not available. Then we would move and, to green. Yeah. And defer to green. Thank you. Appreciate that. You got a motion? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Did we miss anything with that, though? Did I miss something on that? We're fairly covered, I believe. Yeah. We understand the problem. What would you like for me not to have included in that? <laughs> I think it was fine. Go with the cat again. I do. <laughs> All right, and then we'll just continue the discussion on the cross culvert when we have a full board. And we will have our information. We'll also see, check the notes to see if Green did do the review on the pipe. In, if not, and if not, can we get them engaged to to do so before the next meeting? Or geo insight. Great. All right. We're leaving that up to. You. I don't, I don't, I'm hopeful we're not done, but um, I have an easy one if I may. I think Martin, there's there's maybe Mark can add in. There's some housekeeping on the bond release issue. Um, yes, Tom, I saw South that. Council's re reviewing or has reviewed. I'll let Mark speak to that. That the tri party, our tri party emulates the same one that you approved for um, Cooper. Cooper. Mm -hmm. We have the same bank. And uh, but in order for us to, to receive the letter from our bank regarding the tri party, we're a little different than Cooper because we have the 444000 in a cash bond right now. So we would need uh, a, a sign off from you folks releasing that. In order to then reestablish the 380, which is the reduction from the 444 for uh, Balsam and Fraser down to 223, mm -hmm. and then in the establishment of 157 for Spruce in the tri party totaling 380. Um, and that's, I think, a bit of the housekeeping that we don't have in place right now. I got the email on that today. So we can work on it. Um, as far as releasing the bond, do we release the whole bond so then you can put it into the tri-party agreement or we just release the... You'll release the 444 upon, at the same time we reestablish the 380. They're two different mechanisms. <coughs> one is cash, one is a tri-party. Right. The bank won't post the tri-party unless holding. they know they're getting their cash back. Right. You won't release the cash unless you're getting your tri-party. They will happen at the same time, same, same oh, one signature. One of these deals? Phase. One of those deals. You go first, I go first. All right. But we do need signatures on your release or some mechanism. You voted to release it, mm -hmm. but we need some formal mechanism from the bank. Again, this is, it all comes under your protection, right. whether it's cash or tri-party. So do we need a letter from town council? No, what we'll need oh, is a letter yeah, from yeah, the yeah, bank. Yeah, through the chair. All right, chair. <laughs> <coughs> we um, need a letter from. Well, it was explained to me, but I hope I can say that the bank won't sign the um, letter of credit until there's, they have some form of acknowledgement from the board that um, you're okay with this, this release. Shh, I'm looking if right at the TV. I'm looking at the camera. We will honor the agreement that we voted on. Yeah. See, this all goes back to, I'm, quite honestly, and protects you in either format. The mm -hmm. bank is not going to release the money. Mm -hmm. Right. Or, or, or unless you are releasing the bond, if you understand right. that, that's we could never take our bond and run because they want something formal from you. Right. right. So, so I'm totally wondering if we that. just yeah. get some wording from your attorney, uh, something that they can something that we can sign. We'll sign through the so. chair. Yes. I love doing that to you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to see what you love doing later. <laughs> the issue again is right now we have your money. 
right? The bank wants our money that we have of yours. They want us to sign a, a, a piece of paper stating that we're going to give you your money back before they're going to sign their agreement that says we're going to get the money through a bond, that three-party thing, correct? Have the bank draw up exactly what they're interested in and have our attorney give it a, a once over so that our attorney isn't doing the work. The bank's attorney is because they're getting a lot of money out of you. That's fine. The, the other piece of it is what is your mechanism now for me to receive um, if we leave it as a cash bond till we work all this out, it's 380. It's reduced from 444. I have no mechanism to pick up my 64,000 right now because your your treasurer will not release that to me. I've asked Martin and I have spoke about this. There's no mechanism for me to pick up my 64,000 that you voted on over a month ago because you may w entered into the tri-party agreement is what you wish to enter into, correct? Correct. You but, started this. But independent of the tri-party, I want my 64,000 back. How do I get it today? Eliminate the tri-party thing and leave your cash with us. We'll give you the sixty-four grand. But they're still the same. You've reduced my bond. Independent of the mechanism, you've reduced my bond. I'm eligible for my sixty-four. I'm paying you like five percent a month, so you really want to spit it up. <laughs> You're paying us five percent, or we're paying you. We're paying you five percent. Charging you, but you won't pay me. So don't worry. <laughs> All I'm hopeful. Maybe we for. need to go over this farm farm pond a little. No, no, I'm, I'm hopeful for my sixty-four. At least as a start. If your wish is to have the treasurer release the 64 in cash, or yeah, um, then I would need all I need is your your vote, and I can um, send that to the treasurer. Um, Does he earn? Did he earn it? Did he do everything he was supposed to do? Is he, you, is he entitled to it? We already voted yes. to give it to him, so he's yes. entitled to it. Therefore, I would take a, I would make take a, I would accept a motion from this board to release the 64,000. Well, let the you chair might. let the chair do it. With any I don't want to pass the chair to you. Uh -huh. oh, we have where a conundrum. <laughs> I'll make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion to release the sixty-four thousand dollars, give or take the through the pennies, uh, by our vote that he's he's completed the acts of which he is professed to have. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank and you. You've got your and Mark, so a letter from my attorney that that for something to say they're releasing the 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 new you're releasing the sixty four the new three eighty in cash in lieu of the tri party. Well, your attorney, what, whatever wording that comes our way, we'll have our bank. I'm, I'll have our was, account attorney look at it. I, I was trying to draft something. It's like I don't know what the bank is looking no, for. Let, so. No, I, I, let your attorney draft it, and we'll have ours look at it and what they're willing to accept. And our attorney will give it the once over. I'd rather him spend 15 minutes reading his writings than. Well, he was talking to me earlier. He was looking at me. <laughs> I contact. The, uh, uh, my attorney can speak directly to town council. Hopefully, just kind of crank this thing out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's fine. Mm -hmm. They do it all the time. Okay, mm -hmm. Good, thank you. Then why are we here having this discussion if you do it all the time? They should have done why it before the meeting. That before you came here. They outlawed cash bonds years ago, so it's uh, forgetful for how, how the process works. But we didn't. <laughs> Mass General Law did. Mm -hmm. I know we're above that in Littleton here. <laughs> we are above the state. <laughs> so right. lastly, if I may, and thank you for your consideration, we would like to move K forward, okay. either through discussion of the cul-de-sac as you see fit on a conventional versus an OSRD versus bringing the roadway through. We, we'd like to move forward on the road on the rest of the roadway for Spruce and we need some direction on whether we're building that cul-de-sac or whether we bring a through road to the potential subdivision of K. All this is hypothetical of course because K has not been discussed since May sometime but mm -hmm. um, at the board's pleasure we'd like to to get some direction if we could. If tonight's not the night, we'd certainly like to, to proceed with that at your next hearing. But we also have a pending site visit um, that we, from last meeting that we haven't scheduled a date for, which we were hopeful that we can at least schedule and then um, receive a little direction from the board whether they would like that cul-de-sac to stay or bring a through road up through that uh, uh, approved cul-de-sac on Spruce mm -hmm. into the Proposed roadway of K. Okay. Um, so it's not on our agenda. That being said, <coughs> I would I would entertain taking a quick peek at it if my board would be so inclined, just to see 
what they're proposing. Was Kate's discussion not on the agenda? Jamie? Jamie. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Then I'm overstepping that. That's okay. I just, we have it up here. I think it's a good time for everybody to at least take a look at it and get an idea um, of what they're proposing to do on the K yeah. piece. And so please you, give us I a quick overview. A little direction. So this, this is an OSRD for K. And um, and then and then if you will, and I'll try and uh, hold them up at the same time. This is a conventional. Our preferred route is the conventional. We don't see uh, substantial benefit to the open space um, bylaw in the form of open space if we go to the OSRD here. As you can see, this winds a little bit. We use it for drainage. This opens up a little bit and we use it for drainage. I know that there are um, members of your board who are um, adamant about the value of open space being dry, high, usable. In this particular case, we, we don't, we, we're not sure we see that benefit. So we'd like to propose the conventional, which is the bottom one. Uh, and certainly you can take your time to study that and provide direction. But in, in this situation, in the conventional, this is our approved cul-de-sac for spruce. We do not tie the two parcels together through spruce. We come up here through lot 16, which is proposed in both. Mm -hmm. And we exit down on Grimes, which we do on both. But that allows us um, to keep Durkee Farm Estates as is, except for the continuation through lot 16 and the connection through lot 13. Through the chair? <laughs> sure. Thank you. The lower one is the conventional. Conventional. You don't show that other, you said you were going to, where the, the dark green is at the end of the, uh, the tentacle? Here. Right there. There is, you have something proposed there? No. Nothing's proposed. So if you built that one, the lower one, Every, that's all I see. I'm not going to see any more roads. Correct. Just what's there. Correct. If you do the upper one, you got the road coming across, going through that dark green up where it's dark brown up above, and you still have that tentacle coming down and making a connection. That up there is your is your Com open space. Open space. I, I I'd go with the conventional. How many how many lots are on the open, open space? space and how many lots are on the conventional? Same. So, I thought we were, are we reduced by one down here. To, no, they're both 23. Yeah. So the the yield plan is the conventional, which is 23 lots. The open space we were moving lots around previously. We were shifting from Derek E into the open space, and remaining with the same density 30 and 24. So a total of 54 in the open space. A total of 53 in the conventional because we're losing lot 16 in Turkey. And you're okay. not That's the entire, in. everything put together. All of K, that. No, okay. but the, as far as the new K is concerned, it's 23 new houses. So, so the new K under the conventional has 23. Right that's, our, that's our yield plan. This is the basis for anything, any discussion after this. Under this okay. proposal, that's your under the OSRD, we were bringing lot 16, which th this roadway eliminates lot 16. We were moving it up here under this OSRD. Under the conventional, we do not move it up. So aggregate, you would have 30, 24. Down here, you, you would have 30, 23. You have 29, 29, 24, and then 30, 23. It's the same amount of lots. Okay. You just have one less on Derricky or one more on K, depending if it's open space or conventional. All right. Now, as far as, uh, I mean, it just looks like the upper one, you got more road. You lose that entire area where the, uh, again, where the, could you lift the, 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 the conventional one up, please? So, uh, a little lower so you can look at the two of them at the same. Thank you. So, you, the way I look at it, I, I say the conventional one looks like a better way to go with it. It's got more open space without even asking for it. You don't have a road that cuts cuts through. Mm -hmm. The tentacle stops. Well, you're, not, you're not seeing the cul-de-sac. There isn't one. There's, there is. 
right there, that stage. Well, that I don't see. What do you wear the color side? Well, I don't see pavement. I, I, I don't see new lots. When you come into a conventional and move to an OSRD, it's so that you can set a substantial amount of space aside for open space. Mm -hmm. In this particular situation, we're unable to do that. Right. Moving to the OSRD, so we don't see the benefit to it. Well, how about the benefit to the town? It doesn't change. You don't get the benefit. That that I want point. a benefit. That was my point. Well, if I can offer you this, and it wasn't negotiated with your board, independent of either model, you end up with the 11 acre gift that we granted as part of our discussion with the, with the select. Well, that That's has nothing to do space. with the planning board. <laughs> no, but I thought you asked about the town. I did. Yes, well, we want the, the planning board to get something for the town too, not just the selectmen. I mean, they make their build deals early. Well, we got to fight for our well, stuff. Well, the planning board's going to get twenty-three beautiful homes. The who? The planning board. Oh, it... where's the cat? <laughs> <laughs> so we're hopeful to get a little direction on your preference tonight. I... Um, well, you've heard Peter's preference, Amy. Um, I'm all for saving more space, and for it, I guess the conventional plan looks like. It's saving more. Am I mistaken? That's well, there's a little bit more open space on the OSRD. The issue is, is that it's minimal at best, and they do put more asphalt down if they go with that. Was, the conventional plan, in my opinion, is a more viable project. Like it's more beneficial to the town. Would be my my first off. So, if I was to give any direction. With support of the board, conventional. Go with the conventional and hold his feet to the fire. The, the <laughs> irony of this process is your OSRD typically will set aside more open space, reduce your impervious, make smaller lots. In this particular case, due, due to the, the the arrangement of the land mass, it just doesn't provide that. Right. Yeah. It's just so, not a good application of it, in our opinion. But most of the open space up there is all oh. wetland. No, most of the open space that we're getting anyway, it's already a gift to the town. Right, but acres. it's wet. Right. So this is, this, well, this is independent of your board. The gift to the town that we presented here is, is this is all high and dry sand and gravel. Mm -hmm. And this was meant to provide a buffer to the neighbors and part of the view shed and provide this. this bicycle access as well. Well, there's, there's, a a there still will be a trail through here and then down through here, but it also, it, it, it provides your, your is that town forest, if you will. In this wildlife corridor here, because this this is I think ten or twelve acres where um, Sudbury Valley Trust put a one foot strip, which they preferred to call a trail, which we both and all know is not a trail system, but that that prevented the engagement of this parcel to this parcel here. So you have a nice wildlife corridor here, which we're who owns that property? Town. Where's the fish property? I'm not familiar with that. Mish. 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 Mish is over here. Mm -hmm. All right, I, I, I see. I'd like to wait to see what. Um, I think it's the most Mark beautiful property to in town. Okay, so no, no direction, on you, no opinion. Yeah, I'd like to see what they have to say. On so, it. two out of five members, because we're missing two, would say that the conventional would be more preferable. <laughs> we have one abstaining member. So. That's fair. That's fair. Do you have any feel, any input from the other board member? Um, my co quick conversation with Richard today, uh, conventional, Mark said a conversation between you and him which should take place. Okay. That's so. fine. All right. Yeah. Who's refereeing? <laughs> no kidding. You. <laughs> okay. But we, we are in the preliminary role, hearing. We are in the preliminary subdivision Through the process. chair. Yes. Um, and there has been discussion about a site walk and continuing it so what when are you planning the sidewalk at your board at the board's um, we, we when mark the last meeting and when mark returns i will reach out to him um and ask Marin to set up something for all of us so we can attend it would probably be a weekend who's all of us oh you with mark oh so with, with all due respect we we'd asked a month ago to hopefully schedule it and, and i don't think that has happened yet but we're hopeful that we could do a sidewalk prior to your next hearing if you will if, if at all possible. So I would think it would be me and the vice chair that should attend. So, um, but I want to bring the other members up to speed. So. Are you talking to me? No, I'm looking at Mara. Oh. Okay. So for scheduling a site visit, um, you can send out the email anytime. Okay. Um, I'm out next week, so I don't want to delay that schedule. Okay. So I'll communicate with 
Where are you the going vice now? chair. Would you have time on a weekend for an hour, Jamie? Uh, not on a Saturday. Not on a Saturday. So we want to do. What's your next hearing? Uh, second. Next meeting date is November second. We had this one. I guess. I guess. Monday's so. the ninth. Yes. Can bring me the vote. chair. So, so from the, from a process standpoint, if we have the site walk, we modify the application to just be a conventional subdivision. If that's the, if the pleasure of the board, we have another hearing, and the board can get you on move the agenda. that preliminary forward so that we can then close that and move on to definitive. That would be the hope that we. I think we can do that. Yeah. So we'll wait. Through, through your agent or and the, the site walk you, you, might, you might hear from me directly. She'll be on vacation. Okay. But Normally, there's an, in an OSRD, there's a, because it's a special permit, there's more of a, a peer review. Green gets involved. Uh, I would think that if we're just going conventional, we're trying to get the acquiescence that, yes, it's conventional is the way to go, and yes, that's it. And then we move to definitive, and that's when the engineering starts and the peer review starts and so forth. So I don't think there's any reason to... No, it would, to be, engage it would be two members of this board will, will do the walk. Yeah. So, okay. Um, and <coughs> Jamie said this weekend might not work for her as well. Uh, we'll remain flexible if we get it. They're readily available. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you both. Board business. Yes. Town meeting warrant article recommendations. Uh, <laughs> um, Master Plan Implementation Committee has re requested $80,000. Um, that's Article 12B. Um, and wondering if you care to make a board recommendation on that to be, and if you do that tonight, it would be printed in the um, town meeting report. Um, that's what Hannah's waiting for. Mm -hmm. um, so I would make a, I would accept the motion if anybody would want to make it um, to move the warrant article forward for the eighty thousand for the master plan implementation committee. No discussion. With discussion, but I'm wanted to ask Anna if she wanted to speak towards it first. Um, sure. Well, I'm happy to help answer any questions that you might have. But essentially, this is uh, what Mike Selvin came to talk about um, over in the summer. Uh, monies um, would be allocated to work on some scenarios to extend all of this great work that's already been done in the master plan to the next step and identifying some different um, scenarios along with the most important piece is the economic impact of those scenarios for the town. Um, being able to give everybody trade-offs if A is going to be perceived to be of greater benefit to the town versus B. And then the rest of the, the dollars would be for zoning and being able to um, diagnose, um, well actually two different things. One is to diagnose um, whether or not Littleton is complying with state and federal um, bylaws, making sure that we're in check there. And then second, doing an assessment of the strengths and weaknesses of um, what we currently have for bylaws um, as it relates to the common and how um, to make sure that we are as strong as we can be with those bylaws. So the dollars for the Littleton common um, scenario and economic impact work which again hasn't been done for the town before, um, would be 30,000 and then the zoning would be 50,000. We do have um, some good estimates from folks that have done this kind of work before that those numbers are in the ballpark, yes. Okay. Any questions? Okay. No questions, no questions. Didn't we just appropriate 54,000? No. 
we just released 64,000. No, no, no. Didn't we already appropriate some money for the master plan? No, this is this was the presentation. This is the money we need to get. Mike Zeldin came in and presented right. this. Right. These are funds being requested at um, the fall town meeting. There has um, been the no funds already voted on for the implementation. Um, so some of the money was carried over from um, the prior um, three different point. town meeting votes. Yeah, so we, <laughs> that would be added to um, what's being requested. So how much so, presently is left over from basically our... Well, it goes down every week. So I, I can help address that question. So I believe the, the number that um, was transitioned from the Master Plan Update Steering Committee over to the Master Plan Implementation Committee was about $55,000. Of that, the committee um, set aside about $20,000 for administrative help assistance. So that takes us through the fiscal year um, ending June 30th, 2018. So that brings us down to 35. And then rather than asking for a full $50,000 for the um, scenario and, and economic impact work, of the 35 remaining, 20 of that will go toward, toward that economic impact work. So once all of that is utilized, the net is about 15000 of that original 55. Does that help? Yes, and now you want 80,000 more. <coughs> that is, um, yes. Yeah. That's so right. 80,000 more. So, yes. Not 50, 80. 50 and 30. Going to two different places. You can do your math any way you want. <laughs> 180 grand, correct? Yes. The Master Plan Implementation Committee requests your support. Through the Chair, yes. I'd like to make a motion to uh, support the Implementation Committee in granting them their $80,000. Second. So the motion's been made and second to support your request for the $80,000 from the Planning Board. Wonderful. Or as I see it, 1530. <laughs> <laughs> the Committee thanks you. <laughs> thanks. Right. thanks for your patience One tonight, too. Oh, this is your chair next year. What is? She's your chair. Got a vote. All right. Bills and payroll done? Yep. Done. Thank you very much. Um, there were draft minutes from February 27th. Well done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait till they adjourn. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> so. I'll like make a motion to adjourn. Make a motion accepting minutes. Huh? Approve the minutes. So be it. <laughs> You're not the chair. <laughs> well, I made a motion. That was so be it. Right. That was Second. my motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Through the chair, aye. Aye. <laughs> Two is construction inspection reports to accept. Durkee Farms number 28, Cooper Farms number 7 and 8. <coughs> I'll make, right. a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the inspection reports for Durkee and Cooper. <coughs> oh, now you need me. Aye. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I can't vote on. I can't vote on Cooper. Aye. So no. Okay, we'll table that one. It's right All right. So we will not. Tabled. You should, can you change your actually change your motion to just accept I'll the reports for Durkee? I will um, change my motion to approve just the uh, inspection reports for Durkee and not Cooper. We'll table Cooper. Well, I have a question on some of these things here. Seeing as how I have I had no, should I, I should recuse myself from anything having anything to do with Cooper Farms. It's just the smartest way to go, correct? Correct. Wouldn't you say? Yes. So be it. So it stands, so it is written, so it shall be done. Uh, first and a second, nothing, in, nothing on Cooper was in that one. That was all dirty. So be it. All in favor? Aye. 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 One more motion, please. I'll make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. Hmm. 
I'll uh, second that motion. <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> All right. We need a majority? Mm, we have a majority. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I. 